Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this comedy night tonight. Can we get a round of applause? This is one of our first sessions for Laughter is the Best Medicine, our X for Giggles. We have a true spectacular lineup of comedians coming out tonight. So just give them a round of applause. We're going to have a great night. We have our first comedian coming up right now, actually, Eddie Bojangles. Let's give him a round of applause. So, thanks for having me on stage today. I have a few short jokes here for you guys. Why did the kidney join the band? Because it had a perfect set of nephron tunes. Okay, 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 okay. Why don't kidneys ever argue with each other? Because they always find a way to filter out their differences. <laughs> Man, tough crowd, tough crowd. Um, what did one kidney say to the other kidney during a stressful day? You're in this with me, right? <laughs> oh. Let's hear it for our next comedian. Today we will focus on acute kidney injury, a critical issue that confronts clinicians across various fields. AKI or acute kidney injury is characterized by a rapid decline in renal filtration function, which poses significant challenges due to its varied etiologies and potential for severe complications. Now, acute kidney injury, also known as acute renal failure, is characterized by a rapid decline in renal function, leading to an accumulation of waste products in the blood and dysregulation of electrolyte and acid-base balance. It's marked by an increase in serum creatinine, a decrease in urine output, or both. The glomerular filtration rate, or GFR, is the standard metric for assessing kidney function, reflecting how efficiently kidneys are cleansing the blood. To appreciate the complexity of AKI, it's essential to understand the renal anatomy and physiology. So let's do a quick anatomy recap. The kidneys filter blood maintain homeostasis of fluids and electrolytes, and excrete waste products. The nephron, or the functional unit of the kidney, is where this filtration process occurs, with the glomerulus playing a pivotal role. The nephron conducts the filtration process. Each nephron contains a glomerulus, which is a tiny blood vessel knot, which filters waste into the Bowman's capsule. The GFR represents the volume of blood filtered by the glomerulus over time. As the filtrate moves through the nephron's complex pathways, starting with the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tub tubule, and the collecting ducts, it is modified through selective secretion and reabsorption, ultimately forming urine. This urine then accumulates in the renal pelvis before traveling down the ureters to the bladder. Directly measuring GFR is challenging. Instead, creatinine clearance is used as a proxy. Creatinine, a muscle metabolism byproduct, is normally filtered by the glomerulus without reabsorption, although some secretion into the filtrate can occur. 
slightly skewing GFR estimations. Formulas such as Cockcroft Galt and MDRD take variables like age, body mass, gender, and serum creatinine into account to estimate creatinine clearance and thus GFR. The etiology of AKI can be grouped into three different categories, pre-renal, intrinsic, and post-renal. Pre-renal causes are related to decreased blood flow to the kidneys due to factors like hypovolemia, hypotension, or vascular obstruction that impedes circulation. Intrinsic causes impact the nephron directly, such as acute tubular necrosis, where the tubular cells die, potentially due to a prior prerenal event. Glomerulus issues due to non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or ACE inhibitors, rhabdomyolysis, hemolysis, or certain antibiotics like aminoglycosides and vancomycin can also cause AKI. Acute interstitial nephritis, an inflammatory response in the kidney's interstitium, may be triggered by medications or immune conditions. Post-renal AKI results from urinary obstructions that may arise from within the urinary tract or from external pressure like an enlarged prostate or tumor. Symptoms of AKI vary, and while they may mirror the underlying cause, they can include diminished urine output, lethargy, nausea, and even altered mental status. Clinically, AKI may present with signs of fluid overload or hypovolemia. The definition of AKI includes an increase in serum creatinine by more than 26 micromoles per liter within 48 hours, a 1.5-fold rise from baseline within 7 days, or urine output less than 0.5 milliliters per kg per hour for 6 hours. AKI incidence is relatively high with some estimates suggesting it affects 5% of hospitalized patients. It is typically detected via elevated serum creatinine in blood tests, which may also reveal electrolyte imbalances. A high urea to creatinine ratio often indicates a pre-renal origin. Urine diagnostics such as dipstick tests can detect proteinuria or hematuria, while urinalysis can identify CAS, tubular-shaped particles in urine that offer clues about the type of AKI. Imaging like ultrasounds or CT scans can uncover structural causes of AKI. Occasionally, a renal biopsy may be necessary. Treatment focuses on the underlying cause often involving intravenous fluids to enhance perfusion unless fluid overload is present. Medications are reassessed with a focus on those harmful to the kidneys and eliminating those that are harmful to the kidneys. The mnemonic DAM, meaning diuretics, ACE inhibitors, angiotensin, receptor blockers, metformin, and NSAIDs can help recall medications that might need adjustments. Damn! Electrolyte imbalances are corrected as needed. Obstructive causes require prompt intervention such as catheterization for bladder outlet obstruction. In severe cases, renal replacement therapy like hemodialysis might be warranted. Management. The management of AKI hinges on identifying and treating the underlying cause, ensuring adequate fluid balance, and avoiding nephrotoxic agents. Specific interventions might include volume resuscitation in pre-renal AKI, 
cessation or adjustment of nephrotoxic medications, management of electrolyte imbalances, renal replacement therapy in severe cases such as hemodialysis or continuous renal replacement therapies. The prognosis of, for AKI varies based on severity, etiology, and patient comorbidities. While AKI can resolve with appropriate management, it can also progress to chronic kidney disease or end-stage renal disease, particularly in severe or recurrent cases. Preventive strategies are critical, particularly in high-risk populations. These include careful medication management, monitoring for renal function, and optimization of hemodynamic status. In conclusion, acute kidney injury remains a significant healthcare challenge with potentially severe outcomes. An astute understanding of its presentation, causes, and management is crucial for any clinician. Undergoing research and clinical vigilance are necessary to improve patient outcomes and prevent long-term sequelae of this acute condition. Now, let's have our next comedian come out. Oh, oh, I think think you're done, sir. I, I don't think we need to hear any more. I just have one more, I just have one more joke for you guys. Why was the kidney so good at keeping secrets? Because it was a real whiz at filtering out the leaks. Okay, he's done. He's done. You suck! As always, keep your head up. You're doing great. You're better than what you were yesterday. That's a lot. Learn something new today. Gonna be a great doc. Sometimes you just gotta hear that.